Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. On this podcast, I want to talk about context-aware recommendations. I was recently watching a video by Hossein Takhafi, who is the research and engineering manager for the machine learning team at Netflix. And on this 15 minute video, he explained how Netflix goes about solving the problem of recommendation, but also taking context into account. There are a couple of things which are very important to state here. First of all, recommender systems can be a very useful technology for any consumer centric business. So recommender systems, what they basically do is to solve the problem of information overload, and this can lead to large increases in the margins and profit. And I mean, it makes sense when you have, let's say thousands and thousands of movies like Netflix, it becomes very difficult for a user to find the relevant content. So it, a recommendation system can be a very useful tool to also improve the user experience. So that being said, Netflix is one of the best companies for recommender systems. Uh, it doesn't get the recommendations always right. And obviously this is partly due to the fact that, you know, even if there are like countless movies out there, uh, the Netflix catalog is still not infinite. I mean, maybe you can't always make recommendations that everyone will like. So that's an unavoidable issue of recommender systems. It's impossible to get it right 100% of the time for 100% of the people. Nevertheless, there are many things that we can learn from Netflix. And also, the things that are true for Netflix are also true for smaller businesses. So the difference between Netflix and the smaller business or a startup is essentially the volume of data. Um, which, uh, like, because Netflix has tons of data, this raises many issues around you know data engineering and uh, speed and of execution and, and all that which smaller businesses don't have but the rest i mean the general structure and the idea behind the recommender system they remain more or less the same so uh, one of the things which i found very interesting about this presentation is that uh, netflix uses lots of domain knowledge to in order to improve recommendations so what Netflix is first doing for its user is it tries to figure out what kind of mode this user is in. And there are four different modes. There's the continuation mode, first of all, which is when a user wants to resume watching a show that uh, they have been watching recently. So maybe you're watching, I don't know, like a series and you just want to log in on Netflix and continue watching from where you left off. So that's one mode of watching. Then another mode of watching is playing something which was added to the user's list, but had not been watched in the past. So when a user adds something to the list, they are essentially saying that, yeah, this is an interesting video, but I don't want to watch it now. And if they're in this mode, then Netflix needs to figure this out so that they make sure they also recommend some items from the list. Then some users are in rewatch mode where they just want to watch again something which they enjoyed in the past. And finally, some users are in discovery mode, which is when they want to discover something new to watch. So Netflix is using features from the users, from the titles, but also from the context. So if, for example, uh, you have been logging in during the weekdays from a particular device, say your laptop, towards a show, then Netflix is going to use this information to detect that, yes, this guy seems to be like in continuation mode for the last couple of weeks or so. 
and we should suggest that they keep on watching the last show that they watched. If on the other hand you've not logged in on Netflix for some time, then the Netflix might assume, might infer, that you are in discovery mode, that you want to discover new content. Maybe you had left Netflix because you know you were on holidays, or maybe you hadn't found anything interesting to watch for some time, and then you decide to get back on the platform. So Netflix needs to give you a good recommendation in order to make sure you start using the platform again. And Netflix also uses information from the videos, like some shows are just more popular than others, but also from the context. So Netflix can understand whether you are using your mobile phone or your computer to watch something. And if there are any differences in behavior between how you approach the platform of those two devices, then it's going to use this information to make recommendations. So to give you an example, I live in London. When I'm inside the tube, the tube is what we call London's underground here. I'm very likely to watch some particular shows just to pass the time. However, when I'm at home, I'm going to use my computer to watch shows. And the reason I use my computer is because, you know, you have a bigger screen, it's a better experience. So the shows I'm going to watch in the underground are shows that, you know, they're, they're okay, but I'm not super enthusiastic about. And Netflix can figure this out and make appropriate recommendations. So it can be like, okay, so these are some shows which we, we can recommend to this guy, maybe to watch during the day on his mobile device. And then these are some other shows we're going to recommend to this guy to watch, you know, during the night on his laptop. And something else that's very interesting is that Netflix, it uses, I mean, it has this tile format so the, all the shows, they are in front of the screen in like in, on something like a matrix, you know, in rows and columns. So the way all these are arranged are arranged based on their ranking. So the shows which are, which like Netflix thinks that you're most likely to watch, they end up on the left and at the top of the screen. And that's very interesting because Netflix has chosen a format to display movies to you, to display these options to you. And this gives Netflix lots of room to maneuver. What I mean by this is that you see so many recommendations at the same time, where even if you don't like some of these, it's not the end of the world, because it's very likely that, you know, when you, when you go on, when you're on your laptop and you can see, I don't know, like 20 movies recommended to you in one go, it's very likely that you're going to think that one or two of these are interesting. And that's very important for a user because even if they don't like every single recommendation, they still feel that, you know, the service, at least it's not useless, it's, it's doing something. And that's very important. And uh, something else which I found very interesting from, from this talk was that figuring out how to place the row it's not something that is easy to test offline. So Netflix organizes recommendations in rows. So maybe the first row is continue watching. Maybe the second row is items on my list. Then the third row is a category, maybe action adventure films. And Netflix found out that it's difficult to test for this offline. So the way they approach this problem is through A-B testing they don't expand more as to how they actually go about solving this, this issue through A-B testing. I mean, but if you're a data scientist, you can, you know, think of two or three ways through which they could probably have, have approached this problem. But in any case, I found this interesting because Netflix, you know, it has an amazing machine learning team, but this proves that, you know, even if you have lots of data and lots of smart people, there's still some cases where it's difficult to predict the results in advance and the only way to figure out what works best is to experiment. That's also a very important lesson for all, all those of you who are hearing and want to implement data science in your business and you can't predict everything. Yeah, so quite often uh, what you have to do is create a strategy which allows you to experiment without disrupting the user experience in a very negative way. So these were some learnings from Netflix. 
And I believe that what you can learn from this podcast and what you can learn from the talk, if you're going to go and watch it, can also be applied to smaller businesses. The scale is different and a smaller scale actually makes things easier because you don't have to deal with complex data engineering issues, but the rest of the structure is the same. So you can use context aware recommendations even when you have, let's say, 100 or 200 users to start with. And for me, that's very, very powerful because it means that, you know, with the current technology and the current ideas, uh, even a small business can start becoming data driven very early on in its journey. So I hope you found this podcast useful and interesting. Thank you for hearing to this episode and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.